Hi guys, thought I'd come on and make a quick video. Um, it's still early in the morning here, it's pretty dark outside. But today is my big day for uh, dispatching turkeys. Um, I was just thinking there, this is actually my, this is going to be my fifth year uh, pretty much doing turkeys, uh, which is kind of scary. It seems like it was only yesterday. Um, just getting all my packaging ready. Uh, my uh, courier comes around 10 o'clock and he'll take away quite, quite a few orders. So I'm just getting all my boxes and orders made up for that. Um, all my freezers are full of turkeys here. The walk-in chillers full as well. Um, turkeys and hams. Uh, we kind of, what I've settled down to over the last few years, we do uh, turkeys. Uh, I generally try to do maybe three sizes because uh, I, I generally always just get hens and they're all roughly around the same weight, give or take. I'm normally kind of between 13 and kind of 16 pounds, somewhere in that range. And we generally, for most of the years on the farm here, I've had pigs, so we do hams, Christmas hams. And then I also grow out some big chickens, like to three and a half, four kilos. Um, and they're quite popular. We do them for Christmas as well. Uh, a lot of people in Ireland, well, not a lot, but some people in Ireland don't like turkey. Um, they say it's dry, it's probably down to various reasons. So they go for chicken instead. Uh, like it the light a wee bit better. Um, so that's kind of what I'm up to here this morning. And I just wanted to come on because I've been talking to a few people and they were like, oh, we've been waiting hard to see a new video. And um, I suppose there's a couple of different reasons why I haven't been posting very much. Um, well, the first reason is uh, farming's very cyclical. And uh, you know, what I do in the farm every year is nearly the same. So you're just doing the same thing every year. And um, I've never got into YouTube to monetize it, you know, to become, you know, if you look on YouTube now, a lot of the content is, they're, they're, they're content producers is what they are and very good at it, a lot of people. Um, and the sheer time that takes, uh, like I, I wanted to get into YouTube from a purely educational aspect. When I started this, there was very little people, mainly here in Ireland or in my context doing it. And so I wanted to make something, I wanted to put content out there to say that people that might be in a similar um, context to me that, hey, here's the struggles, here's the successes, here's what I'm finding, um, and just try and, it was, there wasn't that many people in Ireland, so I was trying to inspire other people to go and at it. Now there's loads of people around doing it, so I don't feel the need to put, you know, there's loads of people even around Ireland who are much um, more experienced than me now and have, have much more information. Um, the second thing is the amount of time it takes to make these videos is crazy. Like. Even even when I try to do it on the go and do it simple, you still got to watch it all over. Maybe you've, and then I don't like doing anything half ass When you see all these other content producers, like producing really good content, using multiple camera angles and that, I started going down that road a little bit and my time was like, if I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning and going to the farm and working, and like in the early days, I'd be working from five o'clock right through till maybe eight, nine o'clock, go home. I'd be on the laptop researching stuff and then you start adding videos it could be 11 12 o'clock at night before you get done and like that's just not sustainable um and again i'm not doing like if i was in the youtube game uh, for money well obviously you do less farming and more editing um but i started out this year um with a kind of clear goal in my head i wanted to make thirty thousand euros um gross salary so before taxes here in ireland for 10 hours work and now my record keeping through the year at some points on uh, my time is maybe a wee bit sketchy, but um, I did make 30, 000. I actually made about, because all these turkeys are sold and they're going out today and that's pretty much my last big payday. I'll have one more week of sales then after that. And I'm fairly, I can pretty much very accurately estimate what I'll have made for the year and in income. And I'll have, um, uh, when I take out everything, what's left for my salary, because all my expenses are pretty much done for the year now. I'll have actually made about 32,000 euros available for my salary, uh, which is over what I expected. But I reckon I maybe uh, spent maybe 12 hours a week doing that. Now that sounds like, oh, that's amazing. 12 hours a week, 32,000 euros in the bank account. That's that's the job for me. I mean, uh, you've got to take all this stuff in context. You know, I spent the last five years building up this business, um, working incredibly hard, investing in lots of equipment. Um, so that's, you know, uh, it's, I've made 30,000 euros for 12 hours work this year and I could do that probably going on for a few years, but there was a lot of time, money and effort put into that in previous years to make that happen. So it's not a true, um, evaluation to say, look, you can just do this and make that money. 
so I just want to put that out there. Um, but a couple other things, I, I have other passions and interests outside of the farm. And one thing that came up this year was uh, I always had a dream, well, I always had wanted to be a distiller um, from quite, quite early on. Um, just there was never really an opportunity that worked for me. Um, and the opportunity came up earlier this year uh, to become a distiller uh, very locally, like literally about a mile from where I grew up. Um, they built a new distillery. Uh, we make um, triple distilled single malt Irish whiskey and pot still. And so early on this year, an opportunity came up for me to get involved with that. So I grabbed it with both hands. It was something I always wanted to do. And uh, so three days a week, I make whiskey, uh, get to run all this cool kit, and then the rest of the time I spend farming. Um, and it's kind of a good fit for me uh, at the minute. I've I've liked the kind of pace I've slowed the farm down to. Um, there's no way I could like I've the amount of work I've done over the last few years. That's not sustainable long into the future. So I'm trying to shape things now to what I kind of want them to be in, for the next few years, which. Kind of brings me on a lot of the model that I've been teaching up to now is what I've done basically where you just go at farming you're going to make a full-time living out of farming and doing that but in my travels or in, in my encounters with people particularly here say in Ireland I've come across a lot of people who they're not that keen on becoming full-time farmers because kind of I wouldn't say historically now but for the last at least 20 years it's common practice that farming is a part-time occupation. And so that's become very, a kind of a social norm for a lot of people. And so just becoming a full-time farmer is maybe, a, it's a little bit out there. And it is also a lot of hard work. So I've come in contact with a lot of people who, who they might have really good jobs. Um, they can be teachers, they can be all sorts in the private sector, but they have really good jobs. They really have a passion for farming. And so they want to farm part time, but they they don't want to be they don't want it to be their hobby. They don't want to be losing money doing it. Um, and so that's been going on in the back of my head for the last couple of years. Is what kind of model could you have where you're working kind of part time, but you're still it's making it's good for the land, it's good for the community, and it's still making money, um, but you're not there all consumed with it. So that was kind of why I wanted to do this kind of trial year of working the minimum number of hours. Um, and seeing what return I could get on it and seeing what else I could fit in. You know, it might be just be a case that you, you've got, you know, you're a really big family person and uh, you don't want your job to be a farmer and miss all your summer nearly. Of course, there's loads of ways around these problems. Um, but that's just kind of what I wanted to come on, kind of let you know why there's not so many videos coming up because I'm just doing the same stuff day in, day out. And like, you don't want to watch me just doing the same stuff day in, day out. It'll get boring very fast. Um, and one thing I'm probably doing, I'm probably going to, I need to build another egg mobile. And it's got me on the way of thinking. When I started this farm, uh, the global economy was in the way out of a recession. Materials were still pretty cheap. Um, whereas I didn't see now, if I was trying to do this today, uh, I would probably be doing it like I, I just, a lot of projects and enterprises I set up, I just seen what I needed. I went, I built it. I didn't really. I done a lot of work myself and I saved some money there, but I wasn't um, being really feeble or trying to uh, reuse materials. Whatever I needed, I just went and bought it because it was, wasn't was expensive. But right now, if I was trying to set up a farm today, it would be a completely different mindset and model. I would have to be incredibly uh, clever and I'd be reusing and repurposing a lot of stuff. And so I need to build another egg mobile because I sold my last one. Um, and I'm going to build a new egg mobile, but this time I'm going to try and repurpose as much stuff as possible. Um, so kind of coming at it from another angle, you know, someone who's maybe wants it's, wants to get it maybe part time into layers because they're kind of a good part time thing. You know, if you're off, if you work maybe two or three days a week or, you know, you work a couple hours a day, you could have a little layer operation. So I'm going to build uh, an egg mobile, maybe to hold, I don't know, maybe around the 300 mark uh, hens. Um, pastured layers two three hundred i want to i want to kind of get it on a scale that's, that's going to be really work for someone who's going to do this part time so you still get to have that time to be a farmer to work with the land um but also marry that into your other life or your other jobs as well 
Uh, so I'm probably going to be doing that in January, February, and maybe I'll make a few videos of that um, just to kind of show guys what I'm at. Um, but uh, other than that, yeah, I'm just farming away here every day and it's not that exciting so there's no point in me making videos. I don't really have any plans for anything majorly new or different. Um, I suppose you can only push for so long, for so many years, so you got to kind of take a break and chill it out and then the whole thing cycles around again you kind of push on again. Um, I am a little bit conscious of the current economy. Um, I don't know how it is around the world but here in Ireland um, it's economic growth has been ridiculously high. And I don't believe we can sustain it. And me being positioned in the market selling a high-end food product, I'm probably going to be one of the first to get hit um, when signs of a recession come. So I'm also trying to future-proof my business a little bit. Um, I'm looking at my enterprises. I'm looking at which ones might be, uh, you know, prone to get get hit first on that um, so I'm trying to future proof my business as well so that if we did go into an economic recession which I do believe is around the corner I'm not sure how severe it'll be um, but the cost of living is out of control here in Ireland and the only thing that's going to bring that back into check really is a, a recession and looking at like the European Central Bank are probably going to put on more interest rate hikes and that's really going to put people under pressure here which I think will limit spending which our whole kind of economy is built on right now so in the back of my mind maybe i'm looking for next year and i am just looking to build in i don't want to be going off trying to do ridiculous numbers uh, just right now in case i might get caught out so i'm just going to tip along nice just make the money i need i'm not investing heavily in anything just yet because i do think if we do, we do go into an economic recession um the cost of materials the cost of everything goes down and then that's the time then save your cash now and then spend it then if you think and then you know a recession doesn't last that long couple of years and you're back out the other end um so that'll be the time to start spending again so that's my thoughts i'm going to get back to it here i need to get these turkeys ready to go so uh merry christmas to everybody and hope you have a nice bit of time planning and time with your family planning for next year and i hope to see you again soon.